What is up guys, McDoubles back again with episode 2 of my new outlaw series following McDoubles with a Z from 1 to 60 as an outlaw. This is going to be a great episode, there is going to be a lot more PvP in this episode than in the previous since we are already far above level 20. I hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you guys at the end of the video. I just wanted to point out, uh, this guy B Master sent me some mail, said he was a big fan, and he just wanted to support me, so he gave me a few pieces of gear that are very, very good for us to use on McDoubles. So shout out to you, B Master. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you for watching my videos. We are level 30 now, and we're about to head to Hillsbrad, but first, we're gonna use the Scroll of Fortune that we just got. Uh, for getting level 30 and we're gonna get rid of shadow bolt as it is the only ability that we have that actually does nothing for us so let's go ahead to the destruction warlock tree and let's see what we get all right guys that was uneventful because they gave us sense demons and unending breath I, I have to be honest with you uh, I thought it couldn't get worse I was given eye of kill rog and I thought no this is the worst ability I will get on this character and then well uh, as you can see in the chat then I rolled sense demons and unending breath and I I'm I'm lost for words right now all right guys we have a guy over here uh, we've marked him with a circle as you can see up ahead and we're gonna try to chase him down and get that kill and see just what loot is waiting for us on him. We had the chase for quite a while, but here he is in Nathander's stead. And this is going to be it. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to pop criminal intent and go in there stealthed. And this should be an incredibly quick and easy kill. All right. Pop the blood fury going in for the backstab. Another backstab. And we'll just go for the concussive shot there. I thought we'd be in range for the Earthbind Totem. All right, he popped Evasion. We're gonna wait for that to go away. And, all right, he's dead. 5,000 XP for that. Oh, we got a Blood Ring, a Healing Potion, which is very good. But other than that, uh, none of his stuff was very good or worth it. But that's okay, because we still got the XP. Keep running from me. He, uh, he auto attacks, so he got rooted. Another backstab. This is not even easy for him at all. There's nothing he can do. Backstab again, and this is gonna be it, guys. 295, and we got the ability. Auto shot. I actually don't know how to comprehend that one. Is that a good drop? Honestly, it's very hard to tell. I think auto shot was a very good ability to get, and it's not something we would be re-rolling anytime soon. Okay, it looks like we're actually gonna do a SM graveyard run. This is a pretty decent one for me to do, uh, XP-wise, that is. We should at least get to 32 after this, and I'm very excited for it. The best part about dungeons, guys, as an outlaw, is that they do not give positive reputation with the law, so I don't have to worry about ruining my reputation as an outlaw like I do when I quest. This makes doing dungeons probably one of the best and most efficient ways for an outlaw to get XP. And that's the dungeon. We actually picked up some solid stuff like Iron Spine's Ribcage and Iron Spine's Fist. Those are really good items to get. And we got a lot of XP and a whole level just like we thought. I'm telling you guys, dungeons are the meta for outlaws. Do them. If you are leveling an outlaw, do dungeons. Guys, this guy in my group, Melder, a night elf, this guy has defensive stance, thunderclap, and hemorrhage at level 32. His build is god tier. He's a, he's a fantastic tank. I'm, I'm jealous. I'm pretty jealous. I mean, I had a really good start on this character, but it's not hemorrhage, defensive stance, and thunderclap. <laughs> All right, guys, what did we get from the end of this dungeon? Purify. Purify is pretty good. Uh, removes one disease and one poisoned effect. That is a pretty solid effect to have at our disposal, allowing us to remove poisons and diseases can be very good. That's devouring plague that we can get rid of. That is rogue poisons that we can get rid of. And then of course, random things in the world. We are leveling so fast doing these dungeon runs. We have a guy in the cave here. We noticed it because of the trail of dead yetis behind him. So we're gonna get him. It's time. We're gonna go in and stealth, and it should be an honest to god, very quick kill. Uh, really just trying to see what we're gonna get from him. So we got the backstab off. He didn't even realize one hit him. I, in some ways, I feel bad, but you know what? I'm 1250 rep, and uh, what I need is 
Zero rep. I, I'm just playing. I'm just being bad at this point here. Eviscerate. Is he dead now? Auto attack. He's gonna die. All right. What did I get from the chest besides the 5.5k XP? Rugged Spalders! Scaled leather bracers. Wow, what the hell? Guys, I know this is not RuneScape. What I'm about to say might have less weight on it because of it, but honestly, like, kill everybody. Genuinely. Like, you probably just should because you just never know what they have on them. This has an epic random enchant. These Spalders are gonna sell for at least a G. I mean, overall, it was a pretty good kill. Made a decent amount of money off it and got XP. I love being an outlaw. Alright, he's back for more, guys. He's back for more. We don't have Eviscerate up. I'm gonna go for the Nature's Grass. Alright, we're going to build a little bit of space. Alright guys, he attacked us again when we were low, which is fair, completely fair game. I understand. But, in my mind, that makes it fair to go for him again. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to jump right down here and attack him. Battle Shout first. We don't need to be in stealth for any of our stuff. Blood Fury. Go for the big crit on the backstab. Slowing him with the Earthbind Totem. More backstabs. Alright. Saving the energy. He's going to try to heal. I knew it. Flash of Light. Chill out for a second. Get some energy. Big Eviscerate. Didn't crit though, so only 220. Still going for the backstabs. Really just hoping he doesn't try to heal again. And we got him with the big 305 crit. What did we get? Dokevi Gloves. Scroll of Stamina 2, Swiftest Potion, which I believe he got from a quest. That's a very good one to have. That's Sprint, basically. Very happy with that. Real sorry to that guy. I'm just going to straight up leave this area now. But he did try to attack us again as some kind of retribution for what we did to him. So as far as I was concerned, it was a decent little back and forth. You know, so one thing that I saw in the comment section for my previous video is that some of you guys recommended that I get the Retribution Paladin Talent Pursuit of Justice, which reduces the duration of all disarm effects by 50% and increases my movement speed by 15% and my mounted speed by 10%. Food for thought though, something I was looking at that I think typically would not be seen as better, but in my build's particular case looks to be entirely superior, is the fleet-footed talent in the Assassination Rogue Tree. Now this one is looking like it's going to increase my mounted movement speed by 15% and my normal movement speed as well, while simultaneously giving me about a 20% chance per combo point, which will be a 100% chance if I have 5 combo points, to clear movement speed reduction and immobilization effects when used. Now this is a very interesting thing to me, because it's going to give me ways to stick on my targets by being faster and clearing movement speed effects and immobilization effects in a very efficient way due to the fact that I have both recuperate and eviscerate that I use very often. So I think this is definitely going to be the talent that we pick up instead of Pursuit of Justice. All right, guys, let's see what the ability we get is at level 35. Will it be Ambush or Garot? God, I hope so. Let's see. <laughs> Sprint. Sprint. Rain of fire. That's bad. <laughs> I, I have nothing good to say about that one. I wish I had something good to say about it, but I simply don't. We can barely cast two of these before running out of mana, and we're never really going to need this in any way, shape, or form. Uh, at best, I'm going to keep it on my bars if I actually have the freak occurrence where I'd have to take somebody out of stealth. Uh, but other than that, I do not see it being usable, unfortunately, for us. Okay, so what you'll see in this clip is that we were doing a dungeon, and we actually were able to get Curse of Agony, which is a solid ability to have. It's just going to be a decent dot to put on my targets that won't actually interfere too much with the rest of my build. So, I actually think it was not such a bad ability to end up getting. Alright guys, what ability are we going to get at level 39? Let's see. Oh my god. Oh my god! Oh my god! We just got Vanish! We just got Vanish! I can't even believe it! It doesn't get better than that. That is an incredibly good ability to get. Oh my god. Now all we need is Ambush, and then we can get Shadow Dance at level 60 and have the most overpowered character in the game, bar none. Even if we don't get Ambush, just having the sick backstab build with Vanish is just incredible we we are in it boys this this is it this character is going to be something special all right guys we have a guy up here we're gonna get very close to him 
I believe he's doing the Circle of Binding quests, so he should stop soon. And there we go, he is targeting the Thundering Exiles, so we're gonna go for that. He is a Frostbolt build, that's something to keep in mind. Wait till he engages. Alright, Blood Fury, going in for the backstab. Earthbind Totem. He has Blink, Concussive Shot. Alright, backstab again. He has Polymorph, but we have Trinket going in for another big backstab. We're going to go for the Eviscerate. Not quite killing him, but he's very close. I think we're going to get this kill, guys. Just got to get the auto attacks off. And there he goes. Died to auto shot. GG. Let's see what we get. Okay, Swiftest Potion, Healing Potion. These are very good things to get. Superior Healing Potion. Discolored Healing Potion. Scroll of Strength, Scroll of Stamina. Pretty good loot. Actually, very good loot to have all those healing potions. Very happy with that. And as you can see, we are an outlaw. We are finally a official outlaw on this character, making things a lot more scary, but the character is coming into fruition, guys. Very happy with it so far between Vanish and our very good abilities. I truly believe this character is gonna become the ultimate outlaw. We have a rare right here, Singer. Let's see what we get. It's going to be a bit of a fight since we don't have a heal. And we're going to take aggro from all of these things. But I think if we rush her down fast and pop the stone skin totem in the beginning and maybe kite a bit with nature's grasp, it should be a relatively easy fight. All right, going straight in. Stone skin totem. We already have one of them CC'd. I'm moving left and right to get the backstabs off to kind of trick the game into thinking I'm behind my target. All right, check it out, guys. We got the Ziggler, a dagger, 31 to 59. So it has higher DPS than my current dagger, the Toxic Revenger. And it has a chance on hit that says blast the target for 10 to 20 nature damage, whereas my other one put a very weak dot on my target. It's also faster, which is a lot better for what I'm doing right now. But it's overall just a much better weapon. So we got really lucky on that rare spawn to have gotten something better than what we currently had. So we'll go ahead and equip that. And now we're a whole lot stronger than we already were, and we were already pretty damn strong. New ability at level 40 for some reason. Hello darkness, my old friend. Levitate. Not quite reincarnation, not quite. Uh, I believe that was holy light. Um, but it can be used for some niche things here and there. So we'll take it. Uh, the ability to fall off cliffs and not die can be useful sometimes. Alright guys, what are we getting at level 41? Rupture? <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow, that's, uh, that's a bit of a cock block, don't you think? That is not good. Eagle Eye is horrible. So the last two levels, we've gotten two 1AE abilities. And that is pretty bad, actually. Especially when that last one definitely could have been something a heck of a lot better. I guess with some of the drops we've gotten, it could be worse, but it's definitely not a good pickup. Eagle Eye, uh, considering we already have Eye of Kilrog, uh, they basically do the same thing, and uh, that makes it extra useless. So I was doing a quest, and I got this snazzy hat, and I think I look very good in it. Uh, all jokes aside, uh, if you look at our old helmet, Humbert's helmet, which was pretty good, uh, we just replaced it with Adventurer's Pythe Helmet. So Adventurer's Pythe Helm is just overall much better than Humbert's Helm, even providing me with more critical strike rating than Humbert's Helm gave me. As you can see, it's just a complete upgrade over it because of the 9 agility and 14 stamina. Very awesome helmet to have, and like I said, looks awesome too. Very happy to get that drop. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the gear I'm using since I was talking about my new helmet. I thought it only made sense. Uh, we are level 41 at the time of this clip and I'm just going to uh, mouse over it all. I, I, I don't wanna take too long. So it's Adventurer's Pythe Helmet, Amber Glow Talisman from a viewer, Flint Rock Shoulders, very, very good, Hawkeye's Cloak, Iron Spine's Rib Cage, a guy back there I have to kill, um, Enduring Bracers, Storm Gale Fists, Dervish Belt of the Monkey, Petro Spill Leggings, Excelsior Boots, Assault Band, Blood Ring, which we do need to replace, and Insignia of the Horde. We do have Gut Ripper, which was a very good uh, pickup. We have Vanquisher Sword that we got from a fan as well, from the same one who gave us the necklace from the beginning of the video. So again, shout out to that guy. And then of course, Night Stalker Bow. Another thing that I would like to go over as well, guys, is my talent choices. Uh, just so you guys have an understanding of where I am right now, what my idea and logic is behind what I chose uh, at the current level of 42 now. So 
I'm just gonna hover over everything. Most of you guys already know what these talents do, or you can pause the video and read them. And yes, I do know that I can put my talents anywhere that I want. These are just genuinely the talents I believe that I want for now, and I can always just use a free reset at level 60 if I do decide to make changes. So let's go ahead and go over them. I have five points in Malice, three points in Puncturing Wounds, three points in Lethality, three points in Improved Eviscerate, now, one of my favorite talents that I've gotten is actually three points in Fleet Footed. Uh, that's a tooltip error there, but it actually increases my movement and mounted movement speed by 15%, which if I recall is actually going to be a little bit more than Pursuit of Justice in the Retribution Tree. However, it also allows my rogue finishers like Eviscerate to clear movement speed and immobilization effects from me uh, when I use them. 100% chance if I have five combo points, 20% chance per combo point. Very awesome ability to have. We also have Seal Fate, three points in that. This has also been an incredible key talent for us as it has 100% chance to add an additional combo point to my target when I crit with my backstab. Uh, and we should almost always be critting with our backstab. And then we also have 10% more damage with our Eviscerate. Now, if we move over to the Combat Rogue Tree, you'll see we have three points, of course, and Improved Gouge. And then the Subtlety Rogue Tree, we have two points in Opportunity, three points in Master of Deception. This has been incredibly good for us. Three points in Camouflage, uh, combined with Fleet Footed, we now move, if not just as fast as we would normal, we move close to as fast as we do outside of Stealth, uh, compared to how most people typically do. And we have two points in Elusiveness, which uh, is an interesting one. This is going to give my Vanish a one minute reduction in cooldown, which I believe is worth it, even though we don't have Blind or Cloak of Shadows, of course, uh, to get the extra effectiveness from this talent. I think when people take this talent, even on Vanilla WoW or Wrath of the Lich King, if they were to take Elusiveness, they would be taking it specifically because of Vanish. Although, of course, it's very nice to have on Blind as well and Cloak of Shadows. But yeah, we took it so that our Vanish could be used more often and more liberally, and I think that's a very good choice. So... Overall, guys, that is what we chose so far for our talents. If you have any more ideas for things that I could be doing along the way to 60 or at max level, please let me know. All right, what do we get? Oh my God, if that was Ambush. It could have been Heroic Strike though, uh, so we can't be too upset, but that could have been Ambush. However, while Greater Heal does have quite a long cooldown, it does heal for a lot, and we did not have a heal yet, so I'm actually very happy to have picked up at least something, because we can reset with Vanish and Hide, and then Greater Heal, and we don't really use mana for anything else except for Curse of Agony, so it seems like that's perfectly fine. Uh, I do very much like that ability. Alright guys, however, we are going to use our Scroll of Fortune. Uh, we're going to use it on Concentration Aura, as it is the only ability I currently have that really has no value. Um, having that 35% less casting or channeling time when damaged while using Greater Heal could be good, but quite frankly, if I'm casting a 3 second long Greater Heal in the middle of combat, I've probably lost anyway with this build. So, we're going to go ahead and reroll it, and hopefully we get Ambush, Garrote, uh, Rupture, or something like that. Let's see. I see Ambush on there. Wind Shear! I thought it was Wind Fury weapon, but quite frankly, Wind Shear is just as good since we are using a dagger build. I am very happy with Wind Shear. That might be the best interrupt in the game. It has a few things it might contend with, and it might be personal preference, but at least in my book, Wind Shear is incredible. So I'm very happy to have that, and now we're getting attacked by this guy. So yeah, very, very happy to get that ability. That is broken for our build, I'll tell you that much. All right, guys, we have two people grouped here. Both of them can get loot from me, but I can only get loot, I believe, from one of them, although it looked like one of them may have just gained a level, so that could change that. We are, however, and that is exactly what happened, we're going to go for both of them. Uh, I'm not exactly sure if we're going to make it out after killing both of them, or if it's just going to be one of them dies and we have to run from the other. But we are going to go for it. The awesome part about being an outlaw right now with this build is that we have stealth. And it just feels so right. It looks like they are just going to get quests in this city up here. And I believe this little port city does not have guards. So we should be able to roll up on them fairly easily. I don't want to be caught. So I'm going to go into stealth now because we are pretty fast. We're going to go on the lower level guy first. Try to single him out and then go for the higher level guy after that. 
Alright, we're going in. Backstab. We have the Earth Spine Totem up. They have no idea what's hit them so far. Gonna go in for an Eviscerate. Oh, and he's just dead right off the bat. Is this guy AFK? Oh, there are guards. Alright, we're gonna take his stuff real quick. Mid-fight. Gonna go in for the backstab. I don't think this guy knows how to play the game. I'm not even a little bit worried. Winch here. Um, going in for the backstab. Big backstab. Pop the evasion because there's guards and another dude's here. Going in for that too. Another backstab. Eviscerate. Are we gonna get the kill? Yes, we get the kill as well. Can we get the loot before this higher level guy kills us? And I believe we actually can. Yep. <laughs> We actually can because we clicked on it before they were able to take it. That is actually really cool. So even though the level 60s came and killed me, that was a pretty easy two kills. I uh, got them before they even realized what was happening. So worked out pretty well. All right, guys, that is going to be the end of this Outlaw episode. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like and leave a comment in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in the next episode. McDoubles out. <laughs>